Give a little bit of history first and uh, how we got to where we are today. And third party companies, how they've exploded over the first last couple of years. I mean, it's just been ridiculous. The last decade has really changed a lot of how we, you know, look at robots in general, you know, and how we handle uh, our hobby, essentially. But the whole third party thing pretty much started with Japan um, because the whole thing of resin kits and Custom stuff was really popular there. That's where Gundams and everything came from in model kits. And uh, 2004 was when that all kind of really started and became mainstream. Uh, Alternators was supposed to have a, uh, an upgrade kit by Hakabai Takara, and it never happened. And so the third party guys kind of were like, well, we're going to do our own then. And that was the, the you know, T formers back in the day showed these off. And, they were very limited, like these lightsabers and stuff for your alternator toys when alternators was huge and it was our form of classics. So those were the first like third party anything back for then. some reason you have swords modeled after the uh, Yeah, the Star Saber, the star saber <laughs> sword from Armada and Energon. Which the, those were actually I think they were recasts from the one that came with the Japanese kicker. <clears throat> but uh, you know and it, but it all originated from Blunderfest, which was, it was the world's largest um, customizing convention in the world. And, you know, like an example there, like the customized uh, resin kits from stuff like the Kajinra idea, and what's the next one? I don't know what there. Oh, the, the Optimus ring, you know, all kinds of stuff. These were all fan-made stuff that way before the days of fans project. And, and that's a ring that opens up. It's, a, it's, it's the chest that closes up and you open it and there's your frame. It's like a transforming ring. This was all stuff that was made by fans in mass quantities at Wonderfest. So it was a whole convention dedicated to third-party stuff, not just Transformers, anything, anything anime. One of the first Matrix kits, you know, now we see Matrix upgrade kits and all kinds of stuff, but one of the first ones, the Misha doll during Energon. There was dolls of Misha. And, Another Misha doll. Yeah, well, the, like Misha was really popular. Again, the Japanese, they were like, girly figures, and since there wasn't any of the robots, you know, they would make all kinds of things like that. <laughs> this one was really cool. That was a, um, a resin statue that you would just build and then paint. It was done in a resin of uh, Wee Wee Riding um, Grimlock. Yeah, uh, the, that, was the, that was a recent one recently, the Minerva kit from Wonder Festival. It was 2010? Yeah. Kind of looks like your sister. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. I love that kit though, that one's amazing. And then they even had uh, their own Revoltex some people were making because the old text pretty much stopped after the Ultra Magnus and Starscream and uh, well, um, Ultra Magnus was exclusive. Yeah, but other, like that last chunk of them with Hot Rod. Really so they even made their own. There was like a Vault Tech sound wave and then I really know much going you know, on. This. Yeah, and these these exist, they're out there, just they're in limited cool. numbers and they were third party before third party was huge. And you had to paint them yourself too. Yeah, some of them you had to paint yourself, because again, that's that was how the process was back then. Paint uh, yourself. Shark to cons, you know, and then you have yeah, an Ultra Maxi. This one was you took your Revoltec Ultra Magnus and there was an armor for it. So it would actually be to scale a little better. If anyone who wants to hook me up with one. Yeah, if you could find that, that's only like 100 made of that one. You know, and then they keep going, like there was the Drift stuff that showed up before we got our Universe 2.0 Drift. There was, a year before that, too. Yeah, this so, turns into Cybertronian. Yeah, so you know, like there was that kind of stuff that was showing up also. This is all Wonderfest, that's that convention. The, the Metal Hawk that showed up on TFW a few times, the Transformable, very gorgeous. The world's smallest RCs, which sometimes you see them, the wheelies too, those are like the size of a penny. The Triple Changer, world's smallest stuff. Oh, the Ultra Magnus. Now, yeah, now. Uh, this is also a different one from the one that you'll see online now, Heroes Toymaker. Completely uh, different. Form. Yeah, these were done more like in a resin kit stage, like it's a different uh, plastic, complete level. But, you know, there's so much of that came out of Wonderfest. That's where the grassroots begin though. But today... This is not even a whole list. This is just a, a fraction of all the third-party companies and garage kits out there. Um, and thankfully, a few of these guys have come to us and given us some things to show you guys today. So what we're going to do is start it up with uh, iGear. Uh, previous release stuff first, just to... You know. So first up, they did an upgrade set for uh, Fans Project C. It was basically a new head, some missiles, a hammer, I guess, to homage. The animated. And, things, and a green clear flag, because it's a green clear flag. That's kind of a homage to um, Age of Wrath, which was the canceled uh, Dreamwave series, because... Yeah, we had the flag in the cover. 
the next one that came out was Auto Cassette, which appeared in Jeff Sobel's album. Prime and Target. That one. Uh, it actually does fit in the Soundwave's chest. Uh, and it does come in a nice little Soundwave box there, which is kind of cool. And you get two little crumsy figures. Yeah, and it came with a little Energon. It's that little like shards that you can pick up. I got the... Uh, this one was actually kind of hard to get. Like, I don't, I, like, the few I've seen on the record are expensive as hell. But I guess this is so you can reenact your season two intro, Grimlock Fighting Thrust. I don't even know how that scale issue worked out. <laughs> but, uh, that's how it went down. And he gets his own little beer stein there, so he can pretend he's German. And uh, crap, which the American version gave us anyway. Yeah. Oh, I got that one I want. This one had a lot of fun. It nice. It had a few quality issues, but I guess, you know, for a display piece that we're not going to be pushing around, it's not too much of yeah. Just showing off what you got here. Now this one a lot of people have really taken a warming to. It took the uh, cup head that came with Generations Cup and swapped it out with a new one. And you get this little box that gets to sit in the back. The original head. Which one? The original head. Since that's the American release, you have to make one for an e-hobby because it's a different color than blue. Yep. Alright, this one, uh... Basically uses the Legends Bumblebee mold from uh, Classics 2.0 universe and yep. recasted it using uh, Volkswagen. So now you have Cliff Jumper there at the bottom, I suppose, and Bumblebee. And they recently announced that they're going to be doing Glyph, a uh, Bokkan character that originated a few years ago. So everybody, uh, this is kind of when people started taking attention to eye gear when they shrunk down a masterpiece Optimus Prime and made Faith Leader. And from there came the plethora of repaints that we got. Nemesis Leader, Clear Leader, <laughs> Evil Leader, Shattering Leader. I haven't seen that blue one before. For, you know, a couple of hours, I guess. <laughs> Now these were uh, upgraded heads that actually did fit with the Masterpiece Prime. Since this was a smaller version of the Faith Leaders, these were more in size of that. We gave them the outward antennas to... More ox them, design. More ox design, basically. Yeah. And uh, some of you may have seen this in the display case outside, uh, right by registration, but now they're doing the uh, Conehead Jets. Uh, so here's the first one of the jet, who's out and available now. Now we have the upcoming products to show you. So this one's also in the display case outside, Elegy, who is, you know, I wonder who that could be. Yeah. <laughs> and Attack. And these are phenomenal. It's a jet fighter. Of them are actually just stupendous. Side by side with your Masterpiece Star Screams. It's, it's good. So also on the line, they're doing uh, Storm. And the other thing I neglected to point out, though, is if you look here, there's no hip kibble. But the other ones did, too. It slides up on the leg. And this one looks like it takes that uh, design change as well and incorporates it. You're going to be here for a pop culture. Current time. Yeah, so this, I guess, is going to be a generic seeker or to fit with your right fingers. This is a prototype picture, but the actual final one does have a black head. Yep. And, uh, Where's your friend? There's a red stripe, stripe, which is only black on this Oh, they left. Oh, they were just here to, I told them about a red lantern ring. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, horror yeah. modern. Yeah. So, we're going to get a shrunken down nice. Megatron that will be just nice to fit in your pocket yeah. that you can freak the norms out with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, presser. Yes. So, this one is going to be uh, obviously an impact of homage and uh, should be coming out sometime by the end of the year or so. So this, these are the ones that are going to be probably coming up next. The medical specialist, the medical specialist. So, here's some cool things that they got. Like, they got a whole bunch of gimmicks and weapons coming with them, but Ratchet, he has his little welding torch hand, and they got their G1 missile up there. That looks like the saw Ratchet used in the movie. And the head design for Ironhide, you have more of a G1 look up here, and over there you have the IDW look, how he yeah, appears. with the bigger chin. So here's some prototype images of them. They're going to be about uh, in between the size of a deluxe and a Voyager. And they recently announced that this and Ironhide are going to be 110 each. Yeah. Tell me that doesn't look cool. Even as the movie guns. Oh, it's fine.
So this is also the next line they're going to be starting. These are going to be out hopefully by December. Uh, spray. And very affordable, these ones. These are only going to be 15 bucks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Which is pretty awesome. They're about the size of a Legends figure, I believe. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that size they were going for. And Rager. Uh, yes. Everybody's yes. favorite yes. cranky little on. Get our hover on. And uh, another project that they have coming up, I suppose, is going to be a new uh, Bumblebee as well. Which, obviously, from that, we're probably going to get a whole bunch of red and blue and purple and magenta. Green, 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 green. All the various <laughs> versions of Bumblebee. So if you want to check out iGear, that's their website. Already. They, they also have their uh, shop site online. Check them out on Facebook. And if you want to email them any questions as well, feel free to do that. So next up we have Mastermind Creations. These guys are uh, most infamously known for their steampunk line. And their first creation that came out being the uh, Night Morpher Commander. So these use designs from the Hearts of Steel comics. Uh, designs that were made by Don Fedora. Mm -hmm. So uh, from Night Commander, or Night Morpher Commander, we got <coughs> the Annihilator. Who came with a new sword as well and fixed some of the issues that the initial release had in the train track. So here's some fun upcoming products. Get ready. It's going to be expensive. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So this should be up by uh, Christmas time. Night Walker Cyclops. Uh, here's some fun fact for you. He's going to be about the size of a meter class figure. Oh, nice. And just to give you an idea, this is all the pieces that's going to go into making this guy possible. Oh, uh, so next year, this is going to be their core project. They didn't really want to do it this year because there's a bit of some competition on the market. But uh, well, we're going to be getting uh, So if you uh, notice here, Shrapnel will become the front, the bombshell in the middle, and kick back at the back. They'll combine together and make one giant. And after that, they told well, me that their the next project will be Air Screech. So, stab in the dark. Oh. Now, this is a bit of a teaser image. Uh, they're going to be recoloring the Night Morpher Commander again. And it's going to be a Canadian store exclusive. Nice. Um, so possibly one of our online retailers on Cybertron.ca. So keep your eyes open. Now separating themselves from the steampunk line, they're going to start doing more G1 Classics Universe figures. And um, this time, they're going to reveal Exatron. Hmm. Come on, guys. Yes. Come on. Nobody. Here, I'll give you a good hint. Oh, oh my God. Keep going. Not enough. All right. What the hell? Oh man. Oh. So check them out. There's their website. You can email more questions to them, and they're also on Facebook. So search them up. So BTS also sent me a few products to show you guys outside. And the first one that they did was a Classics Prime trailer. So this one gave a little bit different take on what Optimus Prime trailer usually does. It folds outward to the side, and in here you got some extra guns that you can hook up with Bumblebee or Cliff Jumper or anybody else who can come with a gun. So with that, they had to do one for Nemesis Commander. You don't see a trend here with these Optimus Primes? Yeah, I, don't know. I guess it makes it oh. So these were a limited release too. They did a clear version for the uh, rare clear Henke Optimus Prime and one also for Shattered Glass Prime. Obviously the new Magnus. <laughs> so uh, just like we showed you at Wonderfest, there was a G1 Optimus Prime Matrix kit. So what they did as well is they made one that clips into his chest. You can pull it out. It comes with fists that he can hold the Matrix separated. Uh, comes with a backpack for side swipe, a uh, new gun, and an axe as well. So you can plug that into his fist if need be. Now this is their latest release, Sonic Run. Uh, actually, it's pretty cool. I got to fiddle with that one for about a week before the show. And 
needless to say, it's actually enjoyable. So if you really have a sound wave fetish, and uh, yeah, this is great. So they're also doing a black Sonicron, and uh, these are the only images I could find, but they did send me a painted up version, which looks stunning as well, in the display cabinet outside. It's got a lot of nice gold accents on them. And if you'll actually notice that there's two different versions, I don't know if the final one will have gold buttons on the top or silver, but that's what you'll be getting. Nice. <laughs> no, we, we, we can't have Soundwave without some minions. And uh, I suppose the next project in line is their Not Ravage. And they've also mentioned that there's also going to be a Not Condor or something down the line. Yeah. Is there anything? No? Okay. So check them out at uh, btstoys.com. So a uh, fellow Canadian of ours, thanks to he uh, let us know that Renderform is not truly a third party company. It is actually a garage kit company because they cast everything in resin and it's done in limited numbers. But uh, the few people who have purchased their products have never been disappointed. Uh, so originally they started off making a retro act for Optimus Prime. It's been done before, but they're not really easy to get often. So yeah, this was just always pack ins with expensive toys. So. Yeah. And this was one way of getting it through cheaply. Uh, cheaply. Yeah. So Skyfall, this basically took your uh, Skyjack. Yep. Well, Skyfall and turned it more into a Skyjack Cyberjet look to him. Gave him his mono eye, some guns. And he had the option of changing the visor color as well. Then there was the blaster upgrade. Um, this one gave you a variety of different heads you could get, so I tried getting them all on there. So you had more of a comic head up here, uh, G1 toy head, and G1 cartoon accurate head. And then you had a little backpack which his uh, blaster could fit into. And he comes with his gun. Similar to the one that he had with the G1 toy. With a hole in the middle of it. Well, that's actually used for the ear earbuds that the original G1 toy had. I know. <laughs> so a red alert upgrade head. That was another project he did. And uh, gave him more of a G1 show accurate head. And his missile launcher and gun. <coughs> so this one I actually got a chance to see. Uh, Jared, where's he at? There's Jared. He picked this one up at Balkan, and I got to fiddle with this one. So this made your Darkwing look more like he did in the comics and his toy. So this is where it gets fun. Yeah. So first, Goldbug head. So Goldbug should be coming out in August. So sometime soon, actually, because August is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he'll be coming with two hand blasters and uh, hopefully a small add-on for car mode. And it'll be available in these different colors as well. To match whichever mold you own. Or oh, repaint you own. Bumper. Ooh. So Bumper's going to be next up in September. So there's going to be two different head colors for him as well. So you can fit it to the mold that's more to your liking. And he'll also be coming with two head blasters. And that head, I believe, is designed off of Don's work as well from that was from the That was from the ongoing Dreamwave yeah. design, more so. Hubcap. So the little known, I suppose, Autobot from... At Japan. most he was known as a ninja in the Japanese mangas. That's about it. <laughs> so he doesn't really have much fiction, but uh, it's definitely one way to take one of your bump beetles and turn it into a new character for your show. So this is actually a great image that I love because it shows you how you can take three different versions of the mold. You got the uh, Henke Bumblebee on the end there with the bumper head, uh, united with the gold bug because that shiny pink is perfect. Yeah, and then because of this slightly darker yellow, it makes them a little bit more different for the reveal the shield bumblebee for Hubcap. So if there's going to be enough interest, what they want to do, what uh, he wants to do as well, is take the Vortex exclusive that came from Japan, give him more of his peg head look, Give him a new gun as well, but uh, that that's more offensive. If there's if, if. if keep it. So check them out at rubberfun.com. <laughs> All right, new to the uh, scene. They haven't released anything just yet, but they have teased at a few things. Uh, G1 Uppers is going to be known for the Firemaster upgrade, which is going to upgrade your. Voyager Optimus Prime Voyager, yeah. into the Power Master design that is seen in the Almanac 
for Allspark 2? Yeah, the yeah, Allspark 2. Allspark 2. So it'll be a fully transformable trailer that will clip onto your Voyager run. The other thing that they've hinted at is taking the latest Bokkan figure set, the Stunticons, and making a Menasaur combiner. So here's just a glimpse at what the head will probably look like for that figure. Take that image, go on. Yeah. Go on. Click, click, yeah. click. It's gotta be faster. <laughs> so check them out, uh, g1uppers.blogspot.com. So TF Club, uh, they've done a ton of things. Yeah, no. they stem also from that early scene back in the like, Wonderfest days. So they're one of the oldest third party companies, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they've done a lot of things, but they don't really put their stamp on many things, so people might not know what they're connected to. So they're behind the primary school primers. So this is this little chibi movie kind of optimist that you know folded out to this big cube truck with this adorable little puzzle thing. A few people got their hands on this. And lots of great feedback from this one. So the target droids, uh, basically little legend-sized figures that turn into guns. So if you're into your favorite G1 characters training the weapons, then this is just for you. And these are kind of cool. Some people have also fiddled with these. I love these. They're, they're fun. Like, it's a triple changer headmaster. I bought the whole set. Each one of them. So uh, Soundwave kind of turns into his little cassette deck. Optimus still has his cab. And then you got the, uh, the head modes that and attach to any G1 headmaster. And what's also just, they also come with a little clip that you can make the heads go on top of the headmaster. So it's kind of weird. Like, you could actually take Soundwave, you put a clip on him, and then you could put his head on top of that Optimus Prime in its robot mode. It's kind of, it looks really radical, let's just put it that way. <laughs> it's psychedelic. Yeah. So with those, obviously, come our repaints. We have a Sound Blaster version uh, coming out. Pack <coughs> Flops or a Nemesis-type evil commander. So these are brought to us by Robot Kingdom, a few of these new upcoming images. Uh, RobotKingdom.com, check them out. They got a whole bunch of third party stuff that you've seen on this panel. So, this is the big project that they're going to be working on for the next year or two. No, no pun intended. Hercules. This thing is going to be massive. Project, yeah. Each limb is about the size of a Voyager figure. So, oh, he's probably going to stand about the eight tall. I'm going to try to get the make this one. I already got him ordered, actually. And the oh, first yeah. one that has been released is X Graver. He's started just shipping out now. Some people have got him in hand already. And uh, QC's been amazing from what I've been reading up on it. So these are probably going to be about 100 bucks each, so get ready for a big investment if you want this big boy. $600 devastated. So the next one that's uh, going to be up is uh, Dr. Crank. <laughs> Dr. Crank. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next two after that will be Heavy Labor and Structor. So continue with their uh, head and mash line, the Junkie on. Blacksmith. 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 Uh, now we have Blaster, the next the top deck. Yeah. Uh, Megatron here at the bottom, Headmaster, and Ultra Magnus on the end. So this is about the rough size of an actual SLR camera. Oh yeah. So I believe I even saw an image somewhere where somebody clipped in an actual lens from a real camera into this thing. So gives you an idea. All right, these are pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but I have a fun spot for some weird alt modes, and these kind of take designs from World War II and the main. Oh yeah, PCCs. Characters that are able to attach two power core combiner uh, commanders. Emphasize that again, power core combiner commanders. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's really cool. So, as usual, let's the leave them old. <laughs> the target droids. Target droids are so. going to have a black white version for the uh, Optimus color, and uh, we're going to have a purple out. and blue. You know, those are characters, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know really about this is going to be a fun project. Uh, we're going to be getting a whole whack of Dinobots. <laughs> so probably I think the first one that they said was going to come up was the Grimlock. Mm -hmm. And 
this is going to be phenomenal because people are finally going to be getting what they've always been begging for because they're going to somehow make these guys combine. So after uh, a few things, this is a new image here, and this is what their next question is, some sort of predatory royalty member. Yeah, some, <laughs> some predator thing is, that rams a lot. Okay. I'm going to guess it'll be a team of five. Yeah. <laughs> of orange. Some red. Some red, some yellow. Black, some orange. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, robotkingdom.com, check them out. Good prices. So we saved the best for last year. Everybody enjoyed this year's exclusive so far? Yeah. So, Head Robot started out very small. They first made this Cobra Headmaster, and everybody was expecting them to go up and onward because this design was one of the scrapped G1 Headmasters that appeared in the Almanac. No, it's the Ark. The Ark. Too many A's. <laughs> The art book that was uh, released by uh, IDW, and there was a whole bunch of headmaster designs that never got made of, of animals, and they were only done in sketch form. So Head Robots went along and made one of those reality with the snake. So also in that book was this iguana, and that's what they wanted to do as their next project, but unfortunately it has been uh, scrapped. But the prototype is sitting in the display cabinet as well, if you do want to see it. Oh, Aaron's looking confused. It's tiny. It's about that big. You gotta go look at it. <laughs> and here's also some various car art that uh, they've used in various exclusives because there's a variety of uh, colors for the Cobra out there. So this was their next big project that they did, taking a universe hard head and upgrading him with the hot head figure. And as we know, they recolored it, thankfully, and it gave us our great exclusive this year, Stronghold. On the other side of them there, you'll see what they also did this year. It just came out, and uh, I was hooked up with that as well by these guys. And he's in this light cap as well, as long as also with his prototype head and guns. Same with the original release. But this is based on IDW and cartoon appearance of uh, Hardhead with a face instead of a mouse plate. Mouse plate? Mouse plate. I need one more. So this was also a limited release. Uh, this was to Mega Toy Fan. Mega Toy Fan had it at his uh, arts party at Botcom. So this took the world figure you got in a two-pack of bludgeon from Toys R Us and was able to upgrade him into a more G1-looking world. So now we're going to take a look at some of their upcoming projects. Some people have been waiting. This is still on the agenda. So we will be getting this sometime hopefully soon. Uh, last I heard, they were just waiting back on some final plastics. We're going to be hopefully releasing it soon. So it does have a barrel here on the tip of the gun. Tip of the tank. Yeah, so when that comes off, that's where the sword still goes. And these are now hard plastic because everybody was complaining about the soft plastic. So it's hard plastic now, the swords. That plugs onto it. So you can also plug it onto the bottom of the uh, sword yeah. where he's holding it in robot mode. Um, the head also does flip around. You can pull it out. Right here you have the G1 looking face, but when you pull it around, you also have an IDW accurate face with the wires. Um, after this, I'll go into the display case and swap around so you guys can get a view of it because the prototype does that as well. <coughs> So because people also got to the uh, bludgeon in that two pack, they decided to make an uh, upgrade set for that as well. So what this is gonna give you is a new barrel, which also becomes a sheet for a sword over here in vehicle or robot mode. New sword, new head, and a uh, crotch plate. Very important. Samurai's need crotch plates. So what they also wanna do is take that uh, hot head mold again and remold it to make a headmaster for onslaught, give him some new weapons. And uh, we have Butcher. And this is also going to be released for the Tomahawk World, since the Gyro was a limited release. This is going to be more widely available, so you can actually get a world on your shelf easily. Probably to match those colors more than that. It'll probably be black. I'm guessing yeah. it'll match it. 
So once again, you can follow them online, Facebook and Twitter for uh, updates and news. And that's what it will look like when you search for it. You look for behind the scenes pictures and, uh, oh, good, somebody logged into Skype. Oh, it's Shan. Okay, cool. <laughs> So that's been our third party panel prior to the preview. So what we're going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to go fix it outside, but go do look at that display case of what the third parties have given us to show you guys. So thank you. And we'll do this again next year as well.